wow, 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 wow. Me just smacking my peanut butter around. <laughs> <laughs> so, Claire, well, welcome to the Midnight Memo. I'm Kristen. I'm Claire. And we are eating. Yes, we are. <laughs> we are, we're doing a little catch up because we haven't seen each other in a while. <laughs> eating catch up. Wow, she's a comedian, folks. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I will be here <laughs> next Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing a little catch up, and we've come to the realization. Well, what ha- happened was, <laughs> see what happened. Realization. <laughs> we have come to the realization that before we record, there's about an hour, if not an hour and a half, where Claire and I are just talking mad shit. <laughs> <laughs> of random things mm-hmm. and i feel like we're very funny then but we always forget to record those moments so and then we, after like an hour of talking shit then we we're like oh we've, we need to start the episode and then we start the episode with whatever we had planned yeah so this time we are going to just start from the beginning as we catch up with each other and talk mad shit um and then just see where life takes us yeah and i i think it's a- It'll be a cute little, maybe, little series on our on our podcast here. I don't know what it would be called. I'm trying to brainstorm. So, guys, let me we're, know what you we're think. We're workshopping names. So, yeah, I want it to be like something catchy and cute. You know, since we both have like names that start with a the k sound, and I'm like, oh, catch the up, k- like sound. Chris and Claire catch up, yeah. or like CKC KCC, something like that. But I don't know. I'm not very creative. Yeah. <laughs> it literally took me like two whole weeks to come up with the actual podcast name and then that was it was like a one hit wonder like Dude, that was the only yeah. name i could think of so it was so cute though it was so good we loved it you're like okay we're gonna workshop names i completely forgot about it that so that was on me and then you're like okay how about the midnight memo and i was like i love it what else you got and you're like that's it and i was like you know what <laughs> i got nothing so we're gonna go with that yeah yeah but anyway we yeah just catching up what were we talking about before this i don't know um i was talking about peanut butter because <laughs> we do love peanut claire. butter so before we started recording i was telling claire well claire called me she's like you want to record right now and i was like yeah for sure but i'm hungry so i'm gonna make myself a little peanut butter toast thing and i was telling her how i've been you know where you go through just bursts of time where toast and butter like butter toast just hit different and that's literally all you want to consume and you could probably eat a loaf of bread and butter if not that's my everyday you're mentally sane that's that's a separate issue i want to know what it's like to be mentally stable congratulations um but i go through those things and i know claire does as well (laughs) (laughs) so i mean we definitely had those moments in college i remember where one of us would just be eating toast and i would eat that a lot drunk coming home too oh for sure i think that was was like your go-to drunk oh, for meal sure. yeah low effort you know yeah but it quick and easy had all the starch to absorb up the alcohol so i wouldn't throw up the next morning it was my self low effort self-care so that's me if that tells you anything yeah. and i was so extra so this, i would like full-on make mac and make cheese full meals yeah Little, yeah Claire like 1 a.m like, dr- drunkenly in the kitchen making a full ass she's that drunk where she'll make a full ass <laughs> meal and it'll be like bougie because claire can actually cook <gasps> we're talking about cooking okay again si- wait let me finish my story i'm obviously doing fine <laughs> put a pin so, in it <laughs> putting a pin we'll get back to cooking and <laughs> so i was telling her yeah i was basically i have ba- basically eaten a peanut butter toast like every day this week so of course when claire called me i was like put a pause it's time it's our peanut butter toast time so yeah we're talking about that and then we naturally did pivot to cooking too and we're halfway through that conversation before i was like wait we need to record this so we're talking about cooking claire has felt a little sicky girl this past week unfortunately Mm -hmm. she hasn't seen her boo thing in a while and she was telling me how well okay previously to this claire has mentioned quite a few times to me that her boyfriend has come over to cook for her and i'm like oh my god that's adorable and then i just came to find out that it's like cooking for her, but it's not really cooking for her. It's Claire cooking for herself. So do you want to elaborate for the viewers? Yes, I'm uh, fully exposing my boyfriend here. So sorry about it, but not really. Um, don't don't be sorry. 
Yeah, so basically, um, my boyfriend's so, so sweet. And he was like, oh, I want to come over and cook for you. And the first time he came over to cook for me, he seasoned the chicken. Or he was making like chicken, like a chicken bowl situation, I think. Okay. Um, Claire loves bowl food, too. Oh, yeah. We said that before. Another side tangent. Apologies for... (laughs) (laughs) I mean, truly, this is how I think our brains work in such chaotic this is how ways. Our work. <laughs> I love bowl food, and it's pretty much the only food I eat. And uh-huh. what I mean by that is, I'm not the type of person who needs to have all of their food separated on a plate. Um, I much rather have the type of food that you can just throw in a bowl, mix it up, and eat it like that. Like that's all of my meals. Even if it's not meant to be bowl food, Claire turns all her meals into bowl food. Yeah. <laughs> That's my toxic trait. I just only eat bowl food. <laughs> Honestly, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but he was cooking chicken and he had seasoned it and everything. And I re- I honestly don't know how, but like one minute he's like taking the chicken out from like its marinade and seasoning or whatever. Next minute. <gasps> he even did a marinade? He did a marinade. We did a marinade? Ooh, okay. Yes, Gordon Ramsay, come at me. No, <laughs> And then the next minute just smell some burning happening and i look over yeah he, he has burnt all of the seasoning off the chicken <laughs> onto my pan <laughs> and i'm like what's what's going on here what are we doing bud what are we doing literally and so after that he had um it was my turn to help him cook or mm-hmm. it was my turn to cook him something for dinner mm-hmm. i think we were celebrating something but i was like okay and he was like oh yeah like do you want me to help and i was like no no <laughs> like flat <laughs> out but since then i like yeah whenever we cook it's like half him cooking but mostly me just micromanaging <laughs> the whole situation <laughs> um and that makes so much more sense to me no- nothing against your partner but just no it's when hilarious you know, like he cooks when he cooks for you when you were telling me before these other times when you're like yeah he's gonna come over and cook me dinner i was like he's gonna cook like it just you're gonna leave the kitchen in free hands this <laughs> makes more sense <laughs> yes but like i was telling him we do need to continue to like cook together because he is going to need to become a good cook and it mm-hmm. it's a requirement for me because <laughs> in the future cook I, like, hate that she's such a good cook. Because when we would live together, this bitch will literally look at... So, me, I don't know how to cook. Full, flat out, will say, I don't know how to cook. I'm a terrible chef. Not even chef. I'm a terrible cook. Period. <laughs> End of sentence. And living together and having the same eating habits of eating at, like, 9, 30, 10 p.m., we'd be in the kitchen together at the same time. And I probably spent the last two hours before that just planning trying to figure out frantically what can i possibly make myself and then i just make some form of like chicken and rice variation i'm i cook like a college male it's fine (laughs) (laughs) she's trying to make them gains guys i literally i just don't know how to cook like i try and so i would try i have like a little book of homemade recipes from my mama love her to death because she was like you need help oh my gosh yes (laughs) guys it's the cutest little thing it was like uh, on all these note cards and like one Mm -hmm. of those notebook rings oh love you mama bye uh love my mama she's so cute separate separate we had a bunch of bunch of little cookbook things from my mama and so i will eventually go through that and just do some pale comparison attempt at recreating my mom's recipes and it'll turn out okay obviously it's not the same as my mom's because moms just be built different and somehow they make it taste a million times better even if i do literally the same thing i think it just It's a gene that just like comes out once you reach motherhood. That's my theory, (laughs) but I don't know. And Claire will just look in the fridge, find like six random things and be like, this is dinner. Pull it out. No recipes required. No forethought. No planning. Mix things together. Throw it in her bowl of bowl food. And then she it's it tastes good. I'll eat some of her food. And I'm like, literally, how do you do this? And it's always healthy. Uh, that's a lie mine like a, oh my god I, it was always no oh sorry the peanut butter burp it was always so healthy in, compar- in comparison to like my shit yours is always at least you had like veggies and shit mixed in <laughs> i uh, again i, I cook know. like a college male i'm not very good at it <laughs> listen i the thing is that 
you are a good cook when you have a recipe like when you have a recipe I like a recipe for sure yeah it's so good but i'm just more like i can't, i get bored following recipes and i'm just like yeah you let me just you definitely cook off of vibes i don't know how it is <laughs> but you're just like mm, we're gonna throw a little bit of this in here and the recipe this in the cabinet sure okay throw some of that in there two tons of this <laughs> like imagine random. the recipe Three. is just like step one vibes <laughs> <laughs> that's it ingredient <laughs> ingredient one vibes i feel so bad for your child because i that's exactly how i expect your cookbook recipes to look like <laughs> step one vibes step two final dish <laughs> yeah i'm literally like i'll leave them a a little recipe be like about mm-hmm. like look at it feel it out about this much and it's just only <laughs> that's like the description two about this much <laughs> <laughs> literally however you're feeling yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it is a requirement that he needs to learn how to cook because mm-hmm. later on down the road, I'm going to need him to cook for me. That's smart. So Run ahead for yourself. Yeah, I'm really just looking out for myself. I mean, that's what I did. That's how I trapped my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I trapped my partner. He would often come over to my place, and so I would cook, or he would cook too. Sometimes he would bring he would bring over food, and we'll cook a meal together, whatever. But usually. We were hanging out at my place, so it was like whatever I had in the fridge. So I would cook one of like the six things I know how to cook. I got him a dish. I was telling someone this over the weekend when we went camping, and I made my my chili. I made my homemade chili for camping. Well, not homemade because it's literally it's super easy. But I made chili because <laughs> I was like, what's easy? What's yeah. easy food that you can make it while you're at camp? Pre-make the chili and just heat it up when you get there. And I was telling some friends that, that I joked that this is how I trap my partner because he's addicted to it. He never had chili before he met me. Oh, interesting. And I know, right? Crazy. He had never had chili. I mean, do they make chili in Mexico? Mm-mm, that's mm. why. I see, yeah, I see. So it makes sense when you think about that. But I was, yeah, when I was like, oh, do you want chili for dinner? He's like, what? And I was like, oh my God, wait, have you ever had chili? He's like, no, what's that? And I was like, oh, let me make it for you. And so that's how I trapped him. And he, so every few times he would come over, he'd be like, can we just make chili? <laughs> and then when he lived on his own and well, that when we, the first year we were dating, he had a roommate. So that's why he would usually come over to my place. Second year of dating, he lived on his own. Oh my God, wait, this is crazy that I'm categorizing it by these types of years, but <laughs> it's true. Um, he lived on his own. And so when I, I swear every other week that I went over to his place, he was either making chili or had some chili in the fridge that he made himself for that week <laughs> in the fridge because wow. I taught him how, I taught him how to make it. Yeah. And he was, yeah, it's always in his rotation of like food prep. And even now that we live together, always, <laughs> if we don't know what to make, his first suggestion is always chili. And it's hilarious to me. That's so funny. So I trapped him. Yeah. So I cooked him one of the six things I know how to cook and I trapped his ass and now he cooks for me all the time. He he he. Perfect plan. Oh yeah, foolproof plan. Bro, I'm literally, I'm coming to realize that like this past week I was just being a lazy person because I was sick. Mm -hmm. But now this upcoming week, I'm like, I actually don't know how I'm gonna get my exercise in. Like dance was my exercise. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna miss it. I'm already, I'm already sad. Yeah. Oh my God. So going into work, talking to new coworkers and that sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. We had pasta for lunch one day. And so we're joking about how we were just stuffing our faces. And someone made a joke about, I feel okay stuffing my face because I'm telling myself it's to fuel my workout later today. <laughs> that started talking about working out and someone's like, oh, do you work out, Kristen? And I was like, <laughs> bro, uh, Kristen has t- some... such toned arms, just like naturally. Uh, no. Like it's insane. Oh. No, this has literally just been recently. I don't know what it was. Her bicep be popping. I, I decided to stop working out my legs and I did arms and now... My ass be lacking, so we need to <laughs> we need to recalibrate again. <laughs> yeah, but I anyway. want to work out. I want to work out, partner. Hello, hi. I know we should work out together. Okay, but don't make me do cardio because then I'll feel really insecure in here next. <laughs> don't make me do cardio. I'll cry. The only cardio I do is dance, and like if you ask me to run, I'm I'll maybe <gasps> last like a minute, and then I'm like, oh my god, you know what we should do. Have you what? seen those like dance workout videos on YouTube? They were like super, I feel like they were blowing up a bunch 
and COVID because duh. Um, and I did them a few times, but it's kind of weird when you do it by yourself in your house. I feel like sometimes, like I feel mm -hmm. like I would, we could do something like that. I think that'd be fun. Yes. What was I talking about before this? I don't know. Working, working. Oh, someone asked me if I worked out and I was like, oh, well, Mal, that's a loaded question. I did at some point and I go through spurts where I'm really good on it, but I'm definitely going through a rut of not working out. But lately I've been at least consistently being able to work out at least once a week, which sounds very sad, uh, going to these dance classes and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, you dance? And I was telling them about the dance studio that we we're going to. And I was like, yeah, but unfortunately it literally just closed. So I don't know what to do about it. And this person I was talking to was like, oh, you know, you should try for, if you like working out is uh, taking bungee classes. And I was like, oh, and I was like, oh, I've seen those, but I've, ne I've never taken one. Mm -hmm. And she's telling me about it. She was like, yeah, it's super fun. It's just like basically being put in a diaper and jumping around, but it's actually <laughs> really hard work. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I was like, that's so funny you mentioned that because the dance studio I used to go to also did that. They did bungee fitness in like the late afternoons and then dance classes in the evening. Mm -hmm. And I tell them what area I live in. I say I live in downtown. It was like right next, the studio was right next to where I lived. And they were like, oh, the studio I went to was in downtown as Ooh. well. And I was like, what, where did you go? Find out we're talking about the same place. Rough. I, that's exactly uh, what I said. I was like, <laughs> she's like, she's like, oh my God, that's, what a small world. We went to the same place. And, and then she's like, wait, so it closed? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I hate to be the person to tell you this, but it's now closed. And she's like, well, I guess I'm not going. Because <laughs> I guess she started it, yeah, pre-COVID. Taco, taco. And then COVID happened, and then she was thinking about going back to it at some point, but just like back of her head, um, notice sort of a deal. Yeah. Um, but that was super funny and uncomfortable. I was yeah. like, rip, ripperati, I'm sorry to tell you this, but... <laughs> Oops. Yeah. yeah. So now I have to find a new dance studio. I mean, I have one in mind. We'll see. Yeah. It's just further north. So. It is a little far. Yeah. It's like not the farthest, but it's just like just enough where you're. It's the the last studio was just like so conveniently closed mm -hmm. for both of us. It's like now the little drive it'll take to go to a new studio. It's like. Ugh. Yeah. Honestly, I'm being very dramatic. It's only like five more minutes drive for me, but like still, still. I'm, I'm not being dramatic. I'm going from like a three minute drive to a 20 minute drive. Yeah. Yeah. I live more north than you, so it makes sense. But. Uh, Are you going yeah. to classes this week? I was thinking about it because they do have amazing choreographers there. But I was like, yeah, maybe I could explore like doing a couple of those classes every week. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. But they have a lot more levels too than that are offered than um, okay. the studio we were going to. Yeah. So they have and a lot more styles, and I think it's just a little bit more of an established studio. So. But your crazy ass being like, Kristen, you want to take this level four with me on Monday? Listen. I was like, <laughs> no. Linda, Linda. <laughs> Listen. Linda, Linda, Lisi. This you woman, you don't have enough this, confidence in yourself. It's literally like you could totally you do are it. A, you are a trained dancer. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I literally just started dancing again like this past year. But it's like riding a bike. You literally spent half your life dancing. Over half your life. Yeah, but that was all like ballet stuff. But still, still. Linda, listen. Linda. <laughs> Yeah. Also, I just bought tickets for a dance convention happening this <gasps> summer. You're going. I'm going. I'm so excited. Li oh my god, the the lineup is yeah. so insane. I'm going to cry. They also like what's amazing about this Liar. convention. <laughs> I'm just gonna hyperventilate. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you're physically incapable of crying. <laughs> I'm trying to work on it. I'm I've only made you cry twice. <laughs> I've only seen you cry twice. Yeah, and the first time it was your fault because you were crying and then <laughs> listen, I cried. What happened was, <laughs> listen, it wasn't my fault. If Claire's it in a drunken state, Claire will cry if other people are crying. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. I don't think I've seen that one either, but we're not totally sure. Probably because I was also drunk. Oh, yeah. She, 
there's, she was there's very chance, gone. <laughs> there's a chance I have seen it one other time, but I'm not completely sure. Yeah, I don't know. I'm side note. I'm honestly trying to get better at crying. I just need like you want to cry more. Yeah, because it's like being more vulnerable. I don't know. Oh, I just don't. You. I'm trying to self improve. But like I don't know. Cutie. It just makes me so uncomfortable. I'm like, why is Liquid oh, leading me like this? I hate it, but I cry all the freaking time. So, I mean. <laughs> I was literally talking. Oh my God. What, did, what was the last time? I literally cried this week. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm trying to think of the last time I cried. Hold on. I literally cried this past Tuesday. Like, it hasn't. It, it's been five days. I've cried <laughs> literally this week. I went on a date night with my partner and we were talking, what were we talking about? I don't even remember what we were talking about, but I got so emotional. I started crying. I had to like pause it through my whatever I was talking about. And I was like, okay, don't cry. Don't cry. We're literally in public. We're at a restaurant. Yeah. We're going to think this is for a bad reason. And it's not. It was just, I was like so overcome with my emotions. Aww. And, <laughs> and I was going to cry. I was like, don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> See, I, I need to do that. I'm just like, thanks, bro. Like. It's, oh, it's not the convenient, feels. dude. Mm. Like, like yeah, be more being more vulnerable. Love that self-improvement for you. But also being on the other side like me, not convenient. <laughs> We're on the opposite end of the spectrum, I think. We really are. We need to we meet really somewhere are. in the middle. I really do. It's also, it's funny. So my partner's star sign is a Pisces, which <laughs> are known as like the big ass crybabies of astrology. I feel like that's their, uh, what do you call it? Their stereotype. Yeah, their stereotype is like that they're the big crybabies. And I've literally seen my partner cry like also maybe twice. <laughs> and meanwhile, I cry like every other day in our relationship. Not because of him, but just because <laughs> I get like so emotional over just like the smallest things. <laughs> Not trying that. to say my, my, friends, my partner's emotionally abusive or anything. But just like... Oh, this took a turn. Will... <laughs> this took a turn. <laughs> but I cry over like the smallest things in our relationship. <laughs> This is another thing uh, him and I have in common. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. I've only found one difference so far. He doesn't eat my pickles and you would, and he cleans the refrigerator way more often than you and I do. T. Yeah. Well, um, that's all I have to catch up on. Do you have any, catch, any more catch ups? No, I'm just excited for summer. I wish that we had summer break. <laughs> yeah, honestly, dude, like I feel like even though we've been out of school for a while, I also feel like we haven't, and maybe that's just a side effect of literally just being in COVID right after graduating. Mm -hmm. But like mentally, I'm like, oh my god, it's summer break, and I'm like, lol, no, I'm an adult with a big girl job, so I'm still working. Yeah, which we honestly, don't get a summer biggest break. scam. Yeah, but biggest scam of adulthood. Adulthood in general was a scam, but especially that. Yeah, like who said? Who's the first person who was like, I need a job? Like, <laughs> if you think back for when everyone was just surviving. They were just providing for themselves and providing for their families. No one but actually worked. I think that worked. was the job. Yeah, but no one actually like worked to get paid to do things. Like if but back in- they were in, still working all the time because that they needed to but they provide didn't, for themselves. Yeah, but they didn't owe anyone. You know what I mean? Like- Oh, okay. Like yeah. when cavemen were just going to hunt and gather and whatever, they did that on just to survive. <laughs> to gather you know? and whatever. <laughs> yeah. They did it just to provide for themselves. No one was like, I'm going to pay you yeah, to you go do to that. you have to work right now today for this amount of money, yeah. this amount of time. And then see you now. now need to use that money to pay for other things. Like, who, who created that? That's rude. Honestly. <laughs> go back in time and go sue them, Claire. I will. <laughs> Be like, we could all be li trying to live for ourselves right now, but no. Go join a convent. <laughs> this is, I'm just going to go, I'm going to get arrested. I need to go to jail so I don't have to have any responsibilities. That's true. Yeah. You wouldn't have any responsibility. Yeah. You also wouldn't have a lot of freedom, but yeah, you wouldn't have any responsibilities. Listen, <laughs> no responsibilities. <laughs> I'm going to go to Sweden, get arrested. Oh, I'm man. set. I'm good. You, you would be set. Their, like, prison cells are as big as college dorm, U.S. college dorms, which is freaking wild. Because they're not prisons. They're quote-unquote rehabilitation centers. I know. That's what I need. <laughs> What's a freaking, what a concept, honestly. Yeah. Crazy. crazy. That's crazy. So crazy. 
so crazy but yeah nothing else for me so <laughs> right on well there was a lot of tangents here we'll see <laughs> we'll see if we can follow all of them but thank you guys so much for joining this little large long story longer catch up <laughs> with me and claire hope you enjoyed it getting a deep dive into just our daily lives and chaotic thoughts mind, yeah, yeah chaotic thoughts chaotic tangents um yeah. a lot of the times when we do these episodes you know we'll have a topic but uh i think tonight we were just you know there was no topic this is truly just no, our no word. topic just thoughts <laughs> yeah just thoughts just vibes we're vibing tonight vibes tonight's topic vibes <laughs> Tonight's That's recipe, vibes. <laughs> the recipe Naturally. to life, vibes. <laughs> yes. That should that should be the title. Tonight's recipe, vibes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but thank you guys so much for joining us. If you liked this episode, please rate it. Give it a little thumbs up. And don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify so you can be notified when our next episode drops next Tuesday. If you like what we're doing, there is a link in our description. Go check it out. We really love hearing, or we really love your guys' love and support. And it makes us feel good, like, knowing that you like what we're doing. Because we like it. But we're just, we're bopping, you know? <laughs> um, trying to think if I'm missing anything. I think you got everything. Mm-hmm. Sicko mode. Yeah. I, I end every episode like that. Like, not even intentionally. It's terrible. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Also, if you guys have like uh, an idea of what you want this little series to be called, any suggestions, let us know. Oh, name suggestions. We're workshopping it. Otherwise, the episode will be named Recipe Vibes. <laughs> yeah. Tonight's recipe. <laughs> vibes. The mini mini series of recipes. <laughs> tonight's recipes. I kind of like that. <laughs> Maybe. But I also like Claire and Kristen ketchups. Yeah. Tonight's, tonight's recipe, ketchup. <laughs> ketchup be a play on words because we're so we're so cool we're so so creative (laughs) our creative minds uh no you know (laughs) yes perfect well thanks for joining us you guys have a great night day night evening afternoon i said that totally out of order it's okay (laughs) it happens (laughs) hope you're vibing (laughs) Hope your vibe. Hope your vibe. Hope your vibes are immaculate today. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.